Good morning, North Mount. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, North Mount. Happy New Year to you all. So, who brought Gabriel's leftover talkies? Come on, people. Turkey. Oh, you finished it. Stephen, you know, when you come to church, we all fellowship together, right? So when you fellowship eating together, it's always better, all right? Amen. Good to see everyone this morning. Who was excited about the year 2019? I know I am. Amen? God's got a plan for you this year. And if you don't know it yet, just listen very carefully. God's got a surprise for you this year. One of the great things about stepping into a new year is the fact that we get to do what? A do-over of certain things. But this year, God's got a lot set for us. Amen? There's a lot, there's a lot that's going to be happening this year, and I'm so excited about the year 2019. There will be a lot happening in our own personal lives, in the lives of our family members, in this church, in this neighborhood, in the city of Calgary, in this country, Canada. And people will start to recognize there is a God. Amen? So, without much ado, I'm going to read a little bit of the announcement we have. Pastor Greg is away today in Somaliland with his wife. They went to visit with their newborn baby. That picture up there, I think I got it. There we go. That's Grace Cecily. Oh, Cecily, I don't know how to pronounce that word. But I know you know the one I'm referring to. But so basically, they're in Somaliland celebrating with their daughter and um, their family. We hope to see him back sometime this week. So the 2019 envelopes are available in the fellowship hall. If you, have, um, <clears throat> if you know your number or if you need some help, feel free to ask Mabel, um, Ray, Shelley, and some of those in the finance team. And um, we're looking for volunteers. We're always looking for people who are ready to work for the Lord. So if you know you're able to just say, hey, welcome, good to see you. We're looking for you. <laughs> We're looking for volunteers to usher in people into the presence of the Lord every Sunday morning. So feel free to talk to uh, Mabel either after the church service or call during the week. And she'll be, she'll be able to get your information. And um, I just want to say... The Bible study that we started last year, we're continuing on Wednesday. And the prayer meeting continues on Wednesday as well. It's been a wonderful time. If you've not had a chance to come to that Bible study and the prayer meeting, the prayer meeting is at 7. And at 7.30, we start the Bible study. If you've not had a chance to come to that, I strongly recommend it. It's a wonderful time. We've been looking at a few things, open doors. And as soon as we end that, there's going to be another Bible study coming up soon. The young people are starting a new study this coming Saturday, and it's called God's at War. Actually, we at the church treated that Bible study last year, and um, Ray and some of those who were at that particular Bible study can testify to how great the Bible study was. So I just want to encourage you, look for a group this year. Look for a place to connect this year. You might say to yourself, listen, coming on Sunday is fine, but I hope after the service today, you look to God and say, God, I'm ready to commit myself. Amen? And so as we worship together this morning, I want you to close your eyes, bow down your heads. Let's invite the Spirit into our midst. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we know you're already here this morning. We thank you for the year 2018, and we thank you for this great year. We thank you for the things you will be doing, O oh Lord. And Lord, as we gather this morning, we pray in your mercy and in your grace 
that you will be with us. Let your spirit come, O oh Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Let your presence come. For I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise as Vic leads us in the opening hymn. I'll have you all stand and turn to number 431. 431, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Shine. Please remain standing. Amen? All right. Before we go into the, we need to smile. Amen? When you're talking about shining, you're not talking about, no, no. No, you're talking about shine. Amen? Come on, talk to somebody and say Happy New Year to you. Go around the church and say Happy New Year to you. Tell somebody, it's good to see you here today. Come on. Come on. Leave you. Come on. Come and say Happy New Year to this wonderful folks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Come on.
Amen? Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are Christ, the Son of... Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Okay, there's a lag. And the gates of AIDS shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, for in fact the body is not one member, but many. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. You were no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Amen? Let's continue singing as Vic leads us in the next themes. Turn to number three, 434, please. 434, revive us again. 434. Praise ye, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now God above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee. For your spirit of light Who has shown us our Savior And scattered our night Hallelujah, thine the glory Hallelujah, amen Hallelujah, thine the glory Revive us again All glory and praise that was slain, who has borne all our sin and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill our hearts with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. 
Halleluja, amen. Halleluja, align the glory. Revive us again. And then turn to 433. 433, rise up, O church of God. Church of God have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, O Church of God, His kingdom carries long. the night of wrong. Rise up, O sons of God, the church for you doth wait. Her strength unequal to her task, rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod, as followers of the Son of Man, rise up, O Church of God. Thank you. Be seated, please. Amen. In case you've not tapped into it yet, there's a spirit moving. Amen. If you still need to feel alive, I can come over and shake you a little bit. But I want to tell you this. This is a year you have to be excited about. Not just for the church, but for every individual. Amen? God's got a plan. And in this plan, everyone is covered. It goes way beyond the universal health care we have in Canada. And there's no waiting periods. Amen? Amen? The banks of heaven, they're open for business for you. And God is going to see us all through. Amen? Please join me as we're praying. We're going to pray for a few people this morning. We're going to pray for Fred, who's in the hospital. I also got a text message from Pastor Greg this morning. Marilyn, who's been expecting um, a transplant, there was a donor that was said and approved before Christmas, but then they discovered the donor was not suitable. So we're going to pray for Marilyn. Amen. And I know there's so many of our family members going through stuff as well. So I just want you to close your eyes for a few seconds. Close your eyes and pray. Lift up those people to God this morning. Tell God, you are the God, our provider. You are the God, our healer. And you are Jehovah Shalom, the God, our peace. Speak into their lives this morning. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning as a church, we lift up our voices, both silent and loud, 
We call upon you this morning, O oh Lord, that you will hearken to the prayers of your people. We thank you for Marilyn. We thank you for Fred. We thank you, Father, for you were the God who was in charge of everything in their lives. We thank you for our family members and friends and our neighbors that we have prayed for. We bless your holy name, Father, for we are sure of this, that you, O oh Lord, may not wish evil things for us, but you wish good things in everything for us. And Lord, we pray this morning, as we lift our voices to you, we pray that your presence will come into those situations we've prayed for. That your spirit will touch each and everybody here today and those who are not here today. We pray for those who are shut in. And we pray for those who are going through one thing or the other. That did not allow them to come and worship you, O Lord. And Lord, we pray for those of us here this morning, O Lord. Those who are struggling with some situation. Lord, we pray, let your spirit speak into our situations, O Lord. Let your power rest upon us this morning. Let us fill the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, answer all our prayers. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for the, this morning's offering. And um, if the ushers will come forward. Please be seated. Our scripture today from God's Word is taken from John 3, verses 1 to 15. Very familiar. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, 
I tell you the truth, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Never, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Vi. Turn now to number 436. 436. Freely, freely, God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. 436. Have you stand as we sing. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely, you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. All power is given in Jesus' name, in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his power as he told me to. He said freely, freely, you have received freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. Thank you. Be seated, please. Thank you very much, Vic, and thanks, Vi. Before I start, uh, I just want to, uh, for those of you who are not aware, um, B and Julius um, were some. B gave birth to a bouncing baby boy almost a couple of weeks ago now. <laughs> and she's um, mother and baby are doing fine. And Remy over there has been the acting husband because the father has been away. And so he's been doing some wonderful work. So when you see Remy after the service, let's just give him a round of applause. 
And of course, Remy's thinking, Gabriel, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful when we see our kids doing the things we, we, we've been praying they will do, doing some wonderful things, taking up responsibilities. I know when um, Robin first played, Robin and Anna, you, they were grinning with this parental satisfaction. They were so glad. Yes. Amen. This year, your father in heaven wants to say, yeah, yeah, that's my son. That's my son, Gabriel. Amen. We will be talking about rebirth. Born from above. How many of us are God's children here? Raise your hands. Let me see if you're a God. A child of God, raise up your hand. Amen? We all are children of God. And there's something about parents that really... I'm a parent, a proud parent. When you see your children doing certain things, you get so excited. You get so, yeah, yeah, that's my son. That's my daughter. God is the same way. And sometimes when you see your child go the other way, and they decide one day they want to come back into the church, how many of us get really excited when that happens? And Evan is the same way. Evan is so excited. Yes, yes, that's my son. He's back. Amen. When there is a rebirth, when there is a renewal, when there is something called a revival in the spirit of the child, the parent is excited. We're going to take a look at the book of John chapter 3. We do not have much time. It's communion day. I wish it wasn't, but we'll make do with the time we have. Amen? There is something common in today's world. We always say, believe in yourself. How many of us said that last year? Either to someone or to yourself. I know I did. That's a common saying. Believe in yourself. There's nothing wrong with it. Is there? Nothing really wrong with it. But more often than not, when we believe in ourselves, what happens? We let ourselves down. When we believe in humans, humans let us down. In the passage that was read by Vi, there was this professor. He was a professor at the time. He was a celebrity at the time. He was a leader in Israel. And guess what? This leader in Israel came to Jesus, not during the day, not in the morning. When? At night. And you know, Nighttime, if you have a guest visiting you at nighttime, that guest must be really special. Isn't that true? So Nicodemus was a special guest. And this teacher came to Jesus and he said, Listen, you must be from heaven. Duh. Because all the things you're doing doesn't look like things that are from here. God must have approved this. God must have sanctioned all of this. And Jesus was like, yeah, well, we've been doing, we're telling you about ugly things and you still didn't believe us. How can we tell you of heavenly things and you will believe us? 
There was something dead in today's world. The belief in the supernatural. Amen? How many of you agree with me? There was this notion that the supernatural does not exist anymore. There was this notion that the miracles talked about in the Bible that Jesus did and the Israelites saw did not happen. But I know one thing that is sure. God is the same yesterday. He is the same God today. And it will be the same God forevermore. Amen? Has God lost his power? No, I don't think so. But we've lost the belief in the supernatural. We've lost the belief in miracles. I'm just a leader kid and sometimes I feel ancient. But during those short periods of my life, I have seen miracles happen. I have seen God step into the physical space and make things happen. Amen? In the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, God approached Ezekiel and he said, come with me, come with me. And he took him to a place called the Valley of Dry Bones. And he said to him, son of man, Ezekiel, do you believe this dry bones can live again? Guess what? Ezekiel's response was, uh, you're God. <laughs> you know, you're God. How many of us today, if we were taken to somewhere in Serbia or Albania, and we see the mass graves, and the Spirit says to us, how many of us, how many of you believe that these dry bones will rise again? Anyone in this church, including me, how many of us will really say, I believe? We'll just say, well, we believe the rise <laughs> when Jesus comes back. Amen? God said to Ezekiel, son of man, do you believe that these dry bones can rise again? The dry bones in that particular chapter According to this verse said, Then God said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There's nothing left of us. Most of us today believe that there is something wrong in this world. And yet... We don't know what the solution is. And some of us believe because we're advanced in age. There's not that much hope left. We're just waiting for God to happen. God said, this is the house of Israel. Today we are the house of Israel. Some of us have been praying for something for a long time. And we're saying, eh, there's no more hope. Nothing is going to happen. Why? Because the belief in the supernatural is almost gone for most of us. We do not believe God can do miracles. We do not believe that the supernatural still exists today. Amen? I tell you, miracles do happen today. They are history making, heart shaking events which change whole courses of history and the fates of nations. This is what happened in the Bible. This is why the Bible is still alive for us today because some of those things that happened back then are still happening today. Amen? This person, I know Tomby, I don't know what this guy was, but he says that believing in miracles is a basic necessity of mankind. The fundamental need of our world today is a rebirth of belief in the supernatural. If this rebirth is not forthcoming 
from the more progressive creators of a mechanical culture. It may come from natives of Africa and Asia to those who have not yet become victims of the proud materialism of the great powers. So then the reason we do not believe in miracles is because the government is going to take care of it. Our reliance on the government has somewhat replaced our reliance and our faith and belief in God. Amen? We do church every Sunday not because sometimes we're keen on seeing the supernatural happen. We do church every Sunday because sometimes it's what we do. But this year, there is a call to you. God, your Father, is looking to you. He's asking you and is saying, do you still believe in me? Amen? In the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. We struggle with different things each day. We struggle with so many things in our lives, in our families' lives. And yet, we're looking in the wrong direction when it comes to a solution. We are God's children. And the victory that has overcome the world is what? Our faith. I would love to do a series on that, but not today. Our faith in who? In God. When Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he said something. He said, except a man be born from above. And Nicodemus was like, uh, are you saying, I mean, how can you ask a question like that? Are you saying I have to go back into my mother's womb and be born again? This is a professor. This is an elite of his time. This was a guy who knew, quote unquote, everything. And he's asking if he has to go back into his mother's womb to be born again. Uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, I don't think so. That's not what I'm saying. When you're born again, when you're born from above, people will see it. Amen? I remember back in the 80s and 90s in Nigeria, there was this movement. Well, it started back in the 70s, really, when people started to read the Bible. And they're like, oh, I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. And this, and you go to this wonderful place called Nigeria. And a lot of people are born again. And yet, there's a lot of evil. Why? Because people do not understand the concept of the rebirth of the person in Christ. Amen? When we're born from above, something happens. When we are born from above, it is through certain things. When Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, it was saying, you cannot see the kingdom of God. This was Israel that was expecting the kingdom of God to come right now. This was Israel that was excited that the Messiah is finally here. And Jesus was saying to them, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born from above. Unless you have a divine birth. We're going to talk about three things. The first one is, our new birth is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? We cannot say 
We're born from above, we're born anew, or been given a new lease in life, or regenerated without acknowledging the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ died and never rose up, it was just another teacher. But that's not what happened. Jesus Christ died. And on the third day, the Bible says, it what? It rose again. Amen? And it went to heaven. In the book of Romans chapter 8, we were told that Jesus will go to become the firstborn among many children coming after him. This is the new birth to die and be born again. It was a rebirth, a new lease on life. One of the stories in the Bible that always amazes me is the story of Lazarus. He was dead for three days. And the Bible said, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Imagine if you were Lazarus, how would you live your life? He had a new lease on life. Lazarus died, and yet the Bible said, Jesus raised him up on the third day. If I die today, and three days later, Jesus raises me up, guess what I'm not doing? I'm getting a new name. I'm writing out all my debts and so many other things. But I'm going to do what? Live life differently. Why? Because this is, you now understand the finality of life. For us to have a new birth, we need to acknowledge and be convicted of our sins. We need to acknowledge that we are sinners. We need to confess our sins. And we need to do what? Accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In First Peter chapter 1 verse 5, Peter said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The second point, through the living and enduring word of God. That same first picture, chapter 1, verse 25, of verse 23 says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. We are born again through the word of God. Through the words we hear. Through the words we read. This is what renews us. In the book of John, the Bible says, Sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. Make them new. Make them holy. Make them clean with your truth. Because what? Your word is truth. The last one, through the love of God. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The love, the rebirth we have today, that we are able to sit together as children of God, is because of what? The love of God. Amen? With this new birth, when we're born again, comes a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. This is the interesting thing about us as Christians. Oftentimes, we do not remember when we gave our lives to Christ. Oftentimes, we do not remember the new birth. 
Oftentimes we do not remember that time we were so excited about being a Christian. That time we were so excited about worshiping God. And guess what happens? We revert back to our old ways. Well, thanks be to God. Amen? There are certain things that the new birth creates in us. Our new birth creates in us a living hope. What I will call a perpetual hope. Most people walk around today in Calgary without hope. Most people think about certain things and say, you know what? It's hopeless. There's nothing I can do. But with the new birth that we have in Christ, the new birth that we have in God, there is a living hope. Amen? There is a perpetual hope. We have hope for the future. When people are saying, oh, everything's gone to pieces, we are saying what? I have a father who's got my back. Amen? First Peter chapter 1 verse 3, the one we read earlier on, he said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into what? A living hope. Into a living hope. When we're reborn, there's a new hope that springs forth in us. I bet you Lazarus thought when he came out, oh, I'm going to do a whole bunch of things because he's been given a new lease in life. When he was on his deathbed, he probably wasn't thinking about hope. He was hoping Jesus might come and heal him though. But that didn't happen. But on the third day, the Bible said, it came out of the tomb. And he was given what? A perpetual hope. Amen? Second thing, our new birth creates a new human being. How many of us believe we're new each morning? Only Ray and Stephen? <laughs> we are new each morning when we go to bed. How many of us have the power to actually wake us, ourselves up? We're pretty much dead. But each morning, because great is God's faithfulness, the Bible says they are new what? Every morning. When we wake up, we wake up with new hope, with new lease in life. There are so many people in the hospitals just waiting for death. And some are just hoping to be our life tomorrow to see their grandkids, see different people. Amen? I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. When Jesus came, he repealed the law code that had become so clogged with fine print and footnotes that it hindered more than it helped. Then he started over. Instead of continuing with two groups of people, separated by centuries of animosity and suspicion, it created a new kind of human being, a fresh start for everybody. When Jesus came, he gave us a fresh start. The rebirth that God is calling for this year is a fresh start. When we make New Year resolutions, it's because we're hoping for what? A fresh start. When we say to our friends, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, it's because we now know we have what? A fresh start. But more than that, this year God is telling you this is your year of rebirth. This is the year that so many things should be happening in your life, both spiritually and physically. Amen? I'm going to read from verse 17 of chapter 4 of Ephesians. And I'm going to read to verse 32. When there is a new birth in you, so many new things happen. 
You stop doing things you used to do before. You take a new approach. You start doing things afresh. Instead of just going to church and not knowing why you're going to church, you start saying, God, I want to see you. I want you to experience the supernatural. You start telling your friends, there's going to be a miracle in my life this year. Amen? You start telling people, listen, I am a new being because God's got a plan for me. And this rebirth has given me a new chance to look at the world differently. Amen? You start telling people, Everything's going to be all right. Why? Because God's got my back. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. That you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their thinking. And the what? Futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. They're saying, no, no, science got everything covered. God does not exist. There is no supernatural. I then lost all sensitivity. They have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity. And they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which has been corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of the same body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. As a church, sometimes we allow the devil to come in through easily besetting sins. Amen? Anyone who has been stealing must still no longer, but must do what? Walk. Doing something useful with their own hands that they might have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Oftentimes we think we're being Christian when we bring people down. That's not Christianity. Christianity is all about the love of God. And the new man, the new human being, extends grace to everyone. Amen? And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. Brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And verse 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. The new man, when you're reborn, when you're born from above, you're what? Kind and compassionate. Amen? Reading again. I think we've just read through that. There was something I want to read that God has for us this year. Just before we sing that song that seems to be stuck on that particular slide. <laughs> In the book of Joel, chapter 2, and we'll move on to the communion just after this. Joel, chapter 2, when God was speaking to the household of Israel, God made a promise to them. Joel, chapter 2, from verse 22 to 27. Do not be afraid, 
you wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. The next verse, please. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you bond and showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locust and the young locust. The other locust and the locust swarm. My great army that I send among you. You will have plenty to eat. Say amen. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God. Who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Amen. Then you will know that I am in Israel. That I am the Lord your God. And that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. This year God is saying. There is a rebirth. In your individual lives. There is a rebirth in the church. There is a rebirth in everything, and is going to do what? Restore unto us the years the locusts have eaten. All those years we've lost, God is going to restore. For not my Baptist Church this year, God is going to restore so many things. And everyone that sees will be saying, Whoa, I didn't believe this would still happen. Amen. There is a rebirth. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, this is my year of rebirth. Turn to someone beside you and say, say it out loud, this is my year of rebirth. This is my year of rebirth. How many of us believe that? If you believe it, I want you to think it. I want you to act upon it. I want you to let the Spirit minister to you. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Let God's Spirit open up your heart. Do not say, ah, forget that guy. It's just another guy shouting. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. Let the Spirit of God come into your heart. If you're struggling with some of this, then maybe there is something that needs to go. If you have yet not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I welcome you to do so today. And to end this, I want to prophesy into your lives this morning that God's got a purpose for you. And all those things you think are not possible, you will see them happen this year in Jesus' name. How many of you believe? If you believe, say amen. amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for that which you will do this year. And we pray, oh Lord, as we go through the year, give us the grace to understand and believe in you, that we are born from above and shouldn't do things the way the world does things, that we should trust only in you and have faith in you in everything we do. Let your name be praised, O Lord, for we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Because of time, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. One of the things Jesus said when he was leaving. Do these things in remembrance of me. As we sing the first verse of that hymn, let us think of what Jesus said. Vic, do you mind leading us in that hymn? I'm not too familiar with it. Let's come forward.
413, Break Thou the Bread of Life, Dear Lord, to me. 413, first verse. Break Thou the Bread of Life, Dear Lord, to me. As Thou didst break the loaves beside the the sacred page I seek thee Lord my spirit pants for thee O living word and on the night he was about to die Jesus had a meal with his friends and during that meal, I said, do this in remembrance of me. And as he broke bread with them, he said, my body, I break for you. This is the sacrifice I am making so that you will have that new birth, that you will be born anew. Do this in remembrance of me. And on the night he died, Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Let us eat it together to remember his sacrifice that we might have a new birth, that we might have a new life. Let us eat it together. We thank you, Father, for your body. Please come forward. 
the night he died, he shed his blood for us. Let us meditate on those things and meditate on the powerful, powerful message in his death. This is the blood of Jesus shed for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you, Harry. The blood of Jesus shed for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. On that night, as they finished the supper, they drank wine together, and Jesus said, This is my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together the blood of Jesus. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray that as we have swallowed your body and your blood, that we will be filled with your spirit, the spirit that teaches us how to be new humans, the spirit that gives us lease on our rebirth, that guides us, that shows us the way to you, a spirit that lets us believe in the supernatural and in miracles. Father, continue to be with us. For we pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us rise up to sing the last hymn. If you believe in the rebirth, I want you to sing 
the song with all gospel. Vic, do you want to do the honors? Sing it with all passion, believing that God is going to do it. Amen? Number 430. 430, there shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. A mercy dropped round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Precious reviving again Over the hills and the valleys Sound of abundance of rain Showers of blessing Showers of blessing we need A mercy drops round us are falling But for the showers we plead There shall be showers of blessing Send them upon us, O oh Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor your word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy from thrones are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, all oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. But for the showers we Amen. I want to apologize for the time. But how many of you had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord? I did. Amen. Now I want you to believe in prayer. I want you to say thunderous amens to this prayer as we're close. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your bond sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Go in the grace of God. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. And let the spirit of rebirth be your shepherd this year. Go with God's grace. Happy New Year.